Sorry about that, people. But as I was saying, that's the cool thing about this peel plot. You can, uh, I'll put resin down through it. But it's not that my glass was dry underneath it. It's just this peel plot is dry. I kind of want this peel plot saturated too. You don't want to see no dry spots. Especially if uh, this is a surface you're going to paint. Or prime or anything like that. You won't have, it'll take your pinholes way down. It is so for down. I'm going to watch some drag racing this afternoon. That's another thing I like to watch. Survivor? Okay, Survivor's my number one show. And then football. Oh, we're going to put football at number one. Alright. Football's number one. But we all know we can't watch that year round. That's a drag. But, uh, it's, it's Survivor. And USRA, baby. I love watching them drag races. Even the qualifiers. I think Ashley Forth is, is the bomb. Ashley, if you're watching, you're the bomb. <laughs> Robert Hyde. What's up, brother? I know some of you guys got to be watching every now and then. You got to watch some bomber. Get some bomber building action. In between rounds, maybe. Never know, people. John Forrest, if you're watching, go get him, Big Daddy. I'll be rooting you on right here from the shop. <laughs> you know it. Ashley's the bomb, man. Got her an awesome crew. Got her a fast hot rod. And she ain't scared of that bad boy either. She is not scared of all that horsepower one little bit. Bring it on, Daddy. That is a beautiful peel plot job right there, people. That just looks beautiful. Now we leave this on. Now this resin set. So this is exactly how I did this. I waxed it. Waxed her up good. And uh, each time I use this mold, it'll be easier to pop out. It's called your mold seasoning. Okay? So after you get several parts pulled, it'd be a while before I did it. They say you don't, you don't have to wax it as often. Once you get 10 parts pulled, you know 15, you don't have to wax it every time. But, uh, I, I don't know about that. It ain't that big deal to put wax on it. This is what I've heard. Okay, I got my wax, sprayed my PVA. Okay, now this batch of PVA started putting a lot of stuff in the air, cobwebs. You know, and I've had a jug do that. My jug before this last one did that. And uh, this, the purple stuff I got, I used on all this. Uh, that stuff worked awesome. Beautiful. Okay, this last jug I got, this green stuff, same stuff, same brand, part all number 10. It put the cobwebs in the air. It sprayed, it looked good. Look up in the air and there's just millions of cobwebs floating around. Just to float in the air. I called Butch and said, man, what's up with that? He said, I'll just put a little bit of water, mix it. So anytime I add it to my gun, I pour about that much water in the bottom, fill it up about that much. Um, part all, perfect, works perfect again. 
So if you're having problems with your part off, spraying and getting a little cobwebs in there, just add a little water to it. No big deal, because it's water based, alcohol, water. Okay, once that's set up, bam, two coats of urethane primer. And I kind of lay that primer on there a little heavy. What well, if I got to do any sand, then I don't sand all the way through. Okay, two heavy coats of primer. I also don't put as much thinner with it. You know, because we ain't after a pretty surface. We just making like a gel coat, okay? This is that's our surface coat. When we pop that out of, out of the mold, this uh, mold release always sticks to your part. And then you just wash it off with just water. Water hose, take it out back and wash them off when it comes right off. Okay? And after I get my primer on, I put my layer of four ounce. Okay, just, uh, man, I took my brush on top of that primer. Just went to town, man. Put a nice heavy coat of resin on there. Laid my four inch down. Squeezed it all out. Didn't put no more resin. Still plenty on there. Put me a layer of carbon fiber. Then I worked it. I worked it pretty good and I brought all that resin from the bottom. Okay. And it was still, it wasn't sat. I mean it was saturated. But not quite enough for another layer of carbon fiber. So I went ahead and put my carbon fiber on there. And you don't want to just work that so hard you're bringing resin up from the bottom, okay? And you're just going to kind of work it and find your wet spots, find your dry spots. Then you just pour it a little out, squeeze it. Two layers of carbon fiber. Okay, then I took my balsa. And as I showed you guys all this in that last go around, but I'm just going over this again. Okay, my balsa, I flipped it over, took my squeegee. And uh, just put a thin layer of resin on the bottom because when that, as that balsa sits there, you know, we don't want it soaking up too much of that resin, you know. And because uh, we soak too much resin out of that cloth, you'll actually get end up with dry spots and it'll de delaminate and have problems. So, you know, you want your resin saturated. So, we just did that to keep it from soaking up too much of that resin. Put my wood on there. I just weighted it with my sandbags. And no, uh, these are set pretty, sitting pretty flat. And uh, they're, you know, small sandbags. You know, and you just put, that's not like big 50 pounders, you know, that's going to warp this mold. No, they're fine. You know, you can just scatter a few of them out there. Put some weight on it. And that, you know, a true vacuum bagging, you know, might soak a little bit of that extra resin out of there, but. You know, I'm just showing you guys that an average guy can do this without all that. You know, and I kind of had a fits with that vacuum bagging myself. That's a lot of extra work. And uh, the benefits really ain't that great. Tom Cook don't vacuum bag because a lot of times when it folds this glass over the edge, it leaves voids. You know, and I had that problem big time. And my parts are coming out actually better uh, without the vacuum bag. And still using my peel ply. And, uh, you know, my parts are coming out just fantastic, you know, and, uh, so, this is, you know, how I came to this stage, not vacuum bagging and stuff like that. And, uh, and after I got my wood on there, you guys seen my next layer of four ounce cloth, and then my pill ply. And we're just going to let all this set up. Now, when this edges, you know... Uh, dry. See, I did all this yesterday. Well, we all know what that means. But uh, when it still just gets a little rubbery, you don't want to wait too long. You can trim that stuff off with the rubber band. I got that done. Got that done. Got my tube done. And all my buddies went flying today. I was probably John Collins. Hey man, come on out. Come on out. <laughs> and I've been jamming on bomber people. They're all out there right now, flying jets. Want me out there? But I ain't gonna do it. <coughs> well, I ain't gonna do it. I'm gonna stay in the shop today and bust out some bomber parts. So stay tuned. I'll make you guys some more movies. Uh, tune back into some more Bob TV. Same Bob time. Same Bob station. This episode of Bob TV has been broadcasted in Philovision. This is a drama-free zone.